Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobLovePhoto.com and today we're going to be having a quick look at Google's Picasa version 3.9. Um, which is a great free photo editing and organizing app that if you haven't had a go with already you might want to uh, download it and give it a try especially if you're running on a slower PC or laptop or Mac for that matter um, or you do, you're sick and tired of the bugs you get in Lightroom and um, uh, the GIMP um, and in Adobe's uh, associated sort of photograph organizing software. Um, because with Google's Picasa, what you're getting is a relatively lightweight program that is incredibly fast. You can organize all your photos in it, you can edit your photos in it as well, and then you can export them, you can back them up, you can make slideshows. You can make videos, um, you can create GIF CDs, there's loads of different things you can do. And also, as part of the whole process, you can then upload all the photos you've taken for free to your Google Plus or your Picasso Web Albums account and have a free online backup as well. So it's really quite special. Now, I was always a Adobe man. Um, I used and still use Photoshop, I use Photoshop Elements, and they're great editing tools in themselves. But once you get a certain past a certain point with the number of photos you take it becomes increasingly difficult to keep track of them um, to tag them um, and also to, to back them up and archive them as well and I was looking for a solution and I, I played with Picasso once or twice and wasn't really that impressed with it um, over the last sort of several years um, but over the last couple of years I kind of I thought well I give it another go and I'll see see what it's like and it's improved vastly and to be honest for 90 percent of my photo organizing and editing duties Google's Picasa is is really uh, more than good enough um, and I'm sure if you give it a go you'll be really surprised about it um, because as I said because it does run incredibly incredibly quickly even on older PCs and laptops as well so what I've done for the purposes of this video I've been uh, out and about with my Canon 350D just around the house and just was taking photos. Um, now I have taken them in RAW format as well because Picasa does support RAW and then what I'm going to do in a moment is we're going to flash up Picasa, um, we're going to transfer the photos across and I'm going to show you some of the basic things you can do with editing and tagging um, and then what we'll do is we'll go right through to kind of exporting some photos um, and then you can you can do what you want with them um, from that point. One final thing before we get started with looking at the photos, what's really important about, about Picasa is that it's a non-destructive editing process all the way through. So when you import your photos from your camera or your phone or anything like that, um, and then you start playing with them, you start adding tags, you start uh, turning them to black and white, adding vignettes, all that sort of stuff, you're not playing with the original JPEG which is really important because as you well know is if you're uh, if, if you're using JPEGs or raw files for that matter and then creating JPEGs you don't want to keep editing them and saving them because that degrades the quality but also at some point in the future you know you don't want to, to save over your original files whether they be raw JPEGs because your taste your style may well have changed um, and there's nothing worse than coming back to a photo in a couple of years time that you realize you've only got one copy of because you've saved over the, the, the original to I don't like a vignetted Holga style black and white or something like that and now you've got a more more natural style or it could well be that you know over the next several years more powerful editing programs come along that mean we can do a lot more with our photos than we can at the moment you know recovering them making them sharper maybe turn them into 3d all that sort of stuff so you always want to keep the uh, validity of those original files okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my uh, card out of my camera and then I'm going to upload it to Picasso. So I'm going to switch the uh, screencast over to uh, looking at Picasso. The screen might shake a bit as I as I plug my card in. Here we go. Let's see what happens uh, next. Let me just plug this in. And then that goes in there. Right, let me just go back to here. 
and start the screen share. And we want to look at ooh, Picasso. Stay still. Right, brilliant. So, what you what you should be able to see now is uh, my my Picasso screen, and this is the import screen. Normally, when you fire up Picasso, you'll see your library, which is all your photographs. But because I plugged in my card reader with the card in, you, these come up. And so, what you can see at the top is all the photos, and you see a little tick box there saying exclude duplicates. Really important if you've forgotten to uh, format the card, you've still got some old ones on. So, what I'm going to do down the bottom, I'm going to import the photos to my pictures folder on my laptop. I'm going to put the folder title of um, 2013 uh, 11 17. So it's just the just the date backwards. I'm going to put uh, I don't know, Picasso uh, screencast photos. If I can spell correctly, cast photos. And then I'm going to leave the card load. So let's import those. So it's because as soon as you plug a, the card in, it's, it really starts doing it already. Here they are. So what you can see now is on the left-hand side, um, you can see kind of the folder view. And then these are all the folders. That These are all the photos themselves within that particular one. Now, they're just some boring photos. Now, the first thing you, you probably want to do is if you want to... Um, you want to look at the photos you've already taken, won't you? So you just click on the little play button at the top, this little green triangle, and that should hopefully go to a full screen slideshow that you can see. And then you can look through the photos, and then within those photos, you can then star them if you really like them or not. And you know, and when you're doing a lot of photos, this is part of the editing process, so you can start whittling them down. I'm going to come out of there just in case you couldn't see it on the podcast, on the uh, screencast. So I'm going to just star them as I go along. Let's say I particularly like this shot here of this this clock. I'm just going to star that. Now you'll probably see down here in the tray, the photos have started to appear. And then as I choose a different one, let's say I really like that, I'm going to star that. Because what you could do is if you had lots of photos and you wanted to just choose the best ones. What you could then do, you could say, yeah, I really like that photo there. I'll star that. Then if we look at the top again here, you'll see there's a little star. So if I click on that, all the photos are now in the tray. So I can then just work on those particular photos or I can export them or anything like that. Okay, so as you can see, the first stage is you can go through your photos with Picasso and you can star them to choose your favorite so you can whittle them down. Now, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go into this photo here and I'm just going to show you some basic editing we can do. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this little spanner here. And this is the first tab, and we've got all our basic things. We can strop, crop, we can straighten, remove red eye. We've got automatic settings for color. We can add some fill light. And the other thing we're going to do is here is up by this right arrow, I'm just going to put the two pictures down right by side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Do that. Now you might see it selected. So when I do any editing now, it's going to be applied to this photo of the clock on the right. But I can still see the original, um, which is uh, really important so you can gauge where you're going to. Down the bottom, you'll probably see I can zoom in um, and look at the photos much, much closer. I can choose the level of zoom. Let's go back out to that. And let's do some basic editing. So we can straighten the photo. Here we go, nice and easy. I could if I wanted to straighten it. There, that will probably do. I could apply a crop to the photo. It doesn't really just see. Let's do a crop. And I can choose to have the current ratio. I can have choose whatever ratio I want. Let's say I want to do a square crop, which I then apply to here, like so. And I could preview that, see what it looks like. Let's, um, okay, I quite like that, so let's apply it. So that's all right there. Now, now I could say, let's uh, say I'm feeling lucky, right? So that's just kind of increase the contrast. But let's say I wasn't happy with that, so I'll undo I'm feeling lucky and just say, right, I want to make the changes myself. So this is where I can now click on the second tab, and now I can pump up the shadows if I wanted to, pump up the highlights. Um, use the neutral color picker with this is a bit like a white balance tool so I could say well actually that is white there so I can click on that and that will remove any color cast now you might see here it says undo tuning 
one of the limiting factors of the editing within Picasa is it's kind of as you do stuff as you do one, two, three, four edits um, in a row, you can only then go back like four, three, two, one. And what you'll probably find is you'll uh, develop a style where you'll do certain things in a certain order. Like you'll probably um, leave a crop till last, leave sharpening till last, and maybe start off uh, by sorting out any, any color. So we've got all our basic editing things there. Now let's have a look in the next tab, and we can see things that are a little bit more um, fun. So as you can see here, we can sharpen, we can add a sepia tone if we wanted to. On the right, let's undo that. We could change to black and white, nice and easy. Um, probably the what, one thing that is nice and powerful is the filtered black and white. So what you can do with this is it's as though you've added a colored filter to the front of your um, camera. So you can then just choose which sort of... Um, color you want to change it to and of course the different filter means that the black and white will come out in a different way so let's choose that one but I'm actually not going to do it. I'm going to cancel that and we can do a focal black and white so we can do we can do a soft focus that's quite good you see how it's sharp in the middle and then we can move that focus point all around but we're not going to do that discard changes and let's go into oops, let's go into a couple more different things we, we've got so this is where we've got sort of like presets. You'll recognize these from Instagram. Nice and easy, really fast edit. So straight away, we can just click um, Lomo-ish, and it pumps up the colors, adds a nice vignette. We've got Holgerish, which is like a black and white with a colored vignette, nice and easy. Um, 1960s, so it's added little curved edges on it. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Cross Process, we can do that. And you know, with all these things, you can choose how much of it you want to apply. Um, what else was Cine cinema scope that's good for action shots actually you see it's kind of faded it out and added a a, a black border and what we're going to do now is let's go to the the final tab we've got some more things here as well focal zoom this is <laughs> what we can do is pretend we've zoomed in as we're doing it uh, what else have we got uh, neon do that you'll recognize if you use muck around with Photoshop elements in Photoshop you recognize some of these filters we can boost the color and the contrast um, do a Polaroid you see where it's and we can rotate it you know, so you, you kind of got all these really fun um, filters um, that you would use um, in um, oops let me just go back all these fun filters that we'd use on the likes of Instagram or um, uh, let me just go back let's just go back let's get the one photo do that and apply a Holgerish edit there we go so you get all these fun filters that you could normally apply with Instagram um, or uh, on your on your phone with with any sort of phone uh, photo sharing app, and it makes it really easy. So let's say then that I, I like this, and I've decided of this clock, I like the Holger finish, I like the, the black and white with the vignette. So I'm going to apply that. But remember, again, although I've clicked apply for it, I haven't saved it over the original image. All of all Picasso has done is it's remembered the edits I've done, and if I go back to the um, um, if I go back to the to the library, we will then be able to see my photo there. Now I can get rid of all these and revert to the original if I like, but in the library it's showing me the particular photo. So what I could now do if I wanted to is if we look on the right hand side, we can see we've got all the information, all the meta information that you would expect, all the EXIF data is there. Because remember this is a raw file, but what I can also do is I can now click on tags and I could now add a load of tags. So I can now say clock. Um, face black white um, spelled spell it correctly and you can do more at once so I could put Canon 350d rebel XT and it'll add them all to, to here now the when you export the photo these are all saved with the photo as well so when you use something like um, the Flickr uploader those tags will then appear in that and be associated with that with that photo and you can also down the bottom you can save the, some some popular tags that you use all the time and the recent ones that will save as well 
Now, we've also got the Places panel down here as well. So if I'd done some uh, landscape photos, I could now geotag the photo as well if it isn't already built in. So let's search for Gosport UK. And this, you know, is, a, is directly into um, uh, Google Maps. So it's saying, put the photos in. I don't want to put them there. Um, I won't put it actually where I live, but what we can do is we can zoom in like so. And then we can look at the hybrid view. So, you know, you'll recognize all this from Google Maps. So you could find exactly where you took the photo, click on the little marker and say, right, so yeah, I took that photo right there. Click on it, put photo here. OK. And now we've geotagged the photo as well. And then finally, if there was any people in the photo, Picasso is able to scan the faces, recognize them, you can tell them who it is, and it will go through your entire library and face detect everybody so you can associate people and, and tag them in there as well. So let's imagine then that you know I'm happy with that photo and I've done the editing. Um, and what you can then do is I can say, well, actually, I like that one and I like that one there of the horse. So I'm just going to control click that, control click that. Oh, and I like that one of, of the. Uh, the lamp as well and you'll see they've populated the little tray down here so what I can now do is I can now say email these photos to somebody and it will squash them down I could print them out and um, I could share them on Google Plus um, and uh, probably the, the most common thing you want to do then is you want to export them and save them perhaps say as JPEGs so because remember these are raw files so all I do now is I click on export and then I can browse and choose where I want to put them. So let's have a look. I want to put them in my pictures folder. And I want to put them in the screencast photos. I say OK. And it's given me some, so I can uh, use the original size. I could resize them if I wanted to. I can select the image quality. Remember, um, again, with when you're converting RAWs to JPEGs, always save at maximum quality. I could add a watermark if I want, so I'm just going to say, right, export those. So it's exporting those pictures out. So now it's rendering the raw files, creating a JPEG, um, applying those edits, and it's saving them as well. And then it automatically pops up with a folder, but if we stay within Picasa, if we go down here, I can see I've got exported pictures folders now. If I click on that, and here are my photos. So what I could now do is that that's physically on my computer in my photos album. I could now upload them to Flickr or uh, Facebook or anything like that. They're all there, good to go. Um, one thing I'll mention just before we finish uh, covering these sort of basic edits is what you can also do if we go back to say, I don't know, that picture there. I could, if I wanted to, do all these edits and everything. Let's go back to the library now. Let's apply the changes. And you've got file, save as. Now this is really important because again, when we're working with uh, uh, JPEGs, you know, we know that every time we save them, we might well uh, find that um, we're degrading the quality if we're editing them. So what you can do, you could also, ooh, sorry, let me do that again. So we go save as a copy. So we could save another one that way, like that. And we can also export them to the other folder that way. So it's really important, again, it, and it's showing you Picasso's power in the fact that it's always trying to make sure, and it will make sure that you don't delete or go over your original images so your original files are kept um, kept uh, nice and uh, intact. Another thing I want to show you as well before we go is if you right click on something, you can, you've got open with Picasso Photo Viewer, or obviously we could open it with Photoshop, and especially if you click on locate on disk or copy full path, actually, if you click on copy full path and then open up Photoshop and then paste that into the um, paste, paste that into the open file dialog, that will open the file straight away. Um, and remember that Picasso will recognize, obviously, raw files, JPEGs, TIFFs, all, all that sort of thing. So you can work non-destructively all the way through. So there we go. Hopefully, um, what you've seen there is a, 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 some good examples of how you can import photos to Picasa. The, the, the fun and quite powerful editing tools you've got, and uh, in future screencasts, I'll go through some of the more uh, powerful ones like cloning stuff out. Um,
and it really is a fantastic program. And remember, it's Picasso 3.9. Just search Google for Picasso 3.9. Download it. Let it scan through all your photos. It will create a photo library. And then if you sync them to the web, that will then automatically back them up to, I think uh, you can set it so if you set it up so the size is 2048 pixels, you can upload as many photos as you like. Um, you could back them up to at full resolution, but obviously run your, when you run out of your free Google space, you'd then have to start paying. Um, but for all my photos, I sync them up, sync them to the web for the free backup, which is 2048 pixels. So there we go. That is, let me just stop that there. That is um, Google's Picasso 3.9. So as I say, download it, have a play, and you may well find that you uh, find it more useful and quicker than programs like uh, Adobe's Lightroom. Or if you're not using any type of photo arranging and organizing uh, software at all, you might find it might transform the way that you look after your photos. My name's Rob from robnonphoto.com. Thanks for watching.